Greetings, and welcome to Odoo 12 Essentials Exploring the Purchase Application. I'm your instructor, Greg Moss. In this course, we're going to look at the purchasing workflow in Odoo. We're going to see how you can set up a request for quotation, turn that into a purchase order, then take that purchase order, receive items into it, and then create a vendor bill and actually pay that vendor bill. So we'll look at that whole purchasing workflow from beginning to end and then we'll start exploring some of the advanced features like um, alternate units of measure and how to get uh, extra approval some of the communication features and some of that 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 other things that flesh out making a complete purchasing workflow so with that said we're gonna get started we have a create database form up here I'm assuming that you got Odoo 12 installed or have access to an Odoo 12 installation for this course and we have a database name that I've just assigned here Odoo 12 essentials underscore purchase it prompts for an email but you don't have to use an email here and when I'm setting up test environments and I'm working uh, on development environments and other kind of things. I'll just use admin because then I always kn know for sure what the administrator login is for that particular database. We can set a password here. Again, this is just for a example tutorial course, so I don't need a strong password here. You have a phone number here, which we're just going to leave blank, and. Uh, we have English as the language and the country is going to be the United States. So it's very simple. Just fill that out and hit continue and it's going to create our database. Once the database has been set up, you can now install the application. It's not here in the first fold. So just to find it, I'm just going to come up here in the search and type purchase and hit enter and you can see that it now has filtered out all the apps till it just shows the purchase app. You can learn more about it here. It'll take you to the website on Odoo for the purchase app, but we are just going to go ahead and use it by clicking install. And so like most of the other Odoo applications you installed, it takes you to the discuss application menu here with the options here that you have for communication within Odoo. So I am going to use this opportunity to set up a channel right here for purchasing. So I'm going to come in here and hit this add and we're going to add a purchasing channel. And I highly encourage you to use these communication features from the very beginning in Odoo to get a workflow with your employees and the people in the, in, in the department that the application is relative for to improve communications there because this is a really powerful feature but a lot of people just don't use it so we're gonna see how we can use this a little bit to improve some of the communications within a, a purchasing workflow so we've got this set up now if I come here we have a purchase menu that's been added we also have an invoicing menu one thing you'll see that might be missing if you're coming from O, you know earlier versions of Odoo is uh, it used to install the inventory application whenever you installed purchasing so once you installed purchasing it would underneath automatically install inventory because 90% of the time when you purchase things you want the products to be stockable and the track inventory and so forth but in an interest to keep things simple, Odoo has pulled out inventory from purchasing. So now when you purchase things, there is no stocking or any kind of keeping track of those in inventory if you just have purchasing installed. And we'll explore how that affects the workflow in future lectures, but I just wanted to quickly review the menus that we have now show you the discussion that we'll use here to keep track of things that we would like to follow w within the purchasing workflow of the company. So now we're actually ready to look at the purchasing workflow from beginning to end. I'm going to click here on the application menu and choose purchase and you'll see that right from the beginning here it says we create a request for a request for quotation and so basically this is us just saying we need to purchase goods and just like in our other Odoo 12 essentials and pretty much every Odoo course I make 
I want to use a real world example and we're going to use a marine dealership a boat dealer who's buying and selling boats along with all the things that might go into a marine dealer shop. And so when you're purchasing things, you're basically sending out a quote to vendors and saying, hey, I want to buy these things. Can you tell me uh, if I can get them for this price? So for our example, we're going to purchase some safety kits for our marine dealership. And we can do that by just coming up here and clicking create. And it wants to know who we want to buy them from. And it says here, if I mouse over it, it says you can find a vendor by its name. So I'm going to type in Boating Supplies Incorporated. Now, if I just come in here and type boating, I'm going to wait for it to catch up. You'll notice in an Odoo 12, this is integrated now with a database on the internet of companies. So if it's a pretty common company, say Boating RV or Boating World Magazine, these you know pretty co common companies, you can just click on them. So let's say that it's Boating and RV has the products that we want. And when I click on that, it brings in their logo and their name here. Now unfortunately, it didn't bring in their address. So there's it's not perfect, it doesn't bring in everything, but you can see how it's integrated now with the internet better and does this lookup for you. And it did fill in the website right here. And we'll just use them for our example, 7093 South Pine Street. And let's make this in Chicago. Now, notice how when I tab over, it's given us like every state in the world practically. There's no filter here. And it's because we haven't put the country in yet. Um, if we put the country in first, like so and then when we come up here you'll notice that now it's restricted the state list here to more appropriate for the united states and we'll put in use illinois for chicago also something to point out here there is no zip validation this is just a random zip that i've just typed in five numbers it has nothing to do with chicago so just something to keep in mind this is not tied in any way to data it's just informative it doesn't do a cross check. So there's other data here to fill out. And there is like multiple contacts. We have things uh, here that we can define. Um, but we're going to leave everything simple for now and just hit save. We just create a vendor. And now we have an order date. So if we wanted to put the order date in the future, we could. Now let's say what we want to order. And we know we want to order a safety kit. And since we haven't added any products yet, it gives us the option here to create a product on the fly or create an edit. Well, we did a create and edit up here when we did our boating and RV. Remember, it pulled it up and we edited it. Let's just go ahead and just create the safety kit and not do the edit. And you'll notice that it pulls in a product that we've just created on the fly. So we created this product and it just uses the same uh, description as we use for the product name. And so we could change this here to say safety kit includes a life jacket and first aid or something and you could have as long a description as here as you need and here we put in the quantity we want to order so we'll say 12 I skipped over schedule date I shouldn't have schedule date basically just says when we want to schedule to get this particular product when you're dealing in a purchasing environment space can sometimes be a real premium so you might not want certain things to show up until certain times here you could have certain line items that you would say maybe we don't want these safety kits to show up until the 25th for example and we could do that um, you can also even uh, you know specify the time as well with this little icon here so if we actually wanted a specific time maybe we need them by 8 15 in the morning we can do that and depending obviously on the vendor will <laughs> determine whether this even matters or not so I'm gonna come here now in the unit price we're gonna say this is our cost remember this is what we're buying them for so we'll say it's ninety dollars and we're gonna take the taxes off just to show that a lot of times you're not gonna use taxes in business to business at least not in the United States every tax jurisdiction is different but if you're purchasing items for resale, that's different uh, a lot of times tax-wise than if you're selling items to end customers. Again, depends on the jurisdiction. So you can see we have a total here. 
And this is a request for quotation. We can send it out by email or we could print it right here. If we save, we can see here that it shows the status here is RFQ and I come up here to purchase request for quotations, we'll see it listed under RFQ. If I come to purchase and look under purchase orders, we have nothing listed here. That's because we haven't confirmed our request for quotation. So a request for quotation becomes a purchase order once it's confirmed and validated. So let's assume that they tell us, wait, we don't have 12 of those. We've only got 10. So we come in here and change this. We can do that because it's in draft. And we'll say 10 and save. And I'm going to show you that maybe we also say that the price is gone up a little bit. It's actually 920. So you can make those changes. When you got the pricing firm, the quantities firm, that's when you would say confirm the purchase order. At this point, it becomes a document that's like a sales order in the sales side where you've actually now told them they're committed to delivering the product. And it would depend upon your terms with them as to whether you have to pay up front and create a bill for that or whether or not you would first receive the products. But regardless, you now have a purchase order. I want to show you one little thing that can trip people up. If I come up here to purchase and look at request for quotation, I still see the purchase order here. It's just the status is under purchase order. If I come here to purchase and click purchase orders, I still see the purchase order here. So purchase orders are showing up in both Whereas if it's, a, it's still in draft state, it just stays in here and doesn't flow into this bucket. And presumably the workflow here in the design is if you're looking at requests for quotations, you don't, you want to also see the things that are actually confirmed. But if they haven't been confirmed yet, you only want to see the things that have been confirmed here. Once we have a purchase order, we're in this purchase order state, now we want to receive the product. And there is no inventory system here when you just install purchasing. It, it just has a very simplified receiving process. So simple that to receive, you simply come in here, edit the purchase order, and change the receiving quantity. So let's say we've received 10 and hit save. And just like that, you've received. At this point, if I hit edit, you'll notice that I can still come in here and change the quantity. So if I bump this quantity to 12, even though we're on a purchase order, and hit save, I've updated it to now say, hey, wait, we want two more of these things. Even though we haven't billed yet, even though we've already received 10, I've just gone ahead and said, hey, we want two more of those. And I just wanted to show you that workflow that you're not limited to this changing. If you want, you can lock it and then you can't change this. But let's assume that now after our requesting our extra two, we've gotten them, they've been received in and we'll save. At that point, we're ready to create the bill. And you'll notice that it's purple here, which usually means when it's buttons that this is a likely next step. So sending the PO by email, we can certainly do. We can lock it down, which we can do it like that, or we can unlock it. Um, but uh, the re recommended step or the most likely step here in blue is create the bill. So let's go ahead and create the bill. We create the bill. It automatically gives us a sequence number here, which we can change which you might change to match some kind of invoice that they give you. And you'll notice that it's filled in the source document here, it's filled in our vendor, and it's filled in the product down here on the line item along with the source in the line item as well. We can see that it's the safety kit and it includes the description for it and our quantity and there's the unit price and everything. So that's everything we need to do. Notice how we can change these. if something came in different, maybe they're giving us a credit back, or for some reason, whatever reason, we can override those. But let's just save this and keep it like it is and validate. So at this point it's draft, we're not gonna validate yet, but when I validate, 
it's going to take this draft and then actually create a vendor bill that's valid, like an invoice. So the vendor's invoice to you is your vendor bill. So when I hit validate, this actually now means we owe money. Our accounts payable has gone up, if you want to look at it from an accounting sense. Now that we, we actually owe this money to the customer or our vendor, now we can pay it. And so you'll see we have a registered payment button right here as the next most common uh, uh, action that we need to take. I click register payment and our payment amount is here, totally filled in, ready to go. We can obviously change it and we have our payment date. We could change it as well. So maybe we're posting it to tomorrow's date. And then we have what journal. So we can either post it to the bank, which would be most common, you know, in a business to business scenario, you're usually doing credit cards or checks or something that's going to go to a bank account, or you can hit the cash journal. But we'll just do the bank journal. And notice that there's a memo here to reference the vendor bill that this payment goes with. So now I'm going to hit validate. And just like that, we've gone through the whole entire purchasing workflow from beginning to end. We created a request for quotation. We added our line items to what we wanted to purchase there. We validated it to turn it into a purchase order. Once it was up in the purchase order state, and you can see it right here, we were able to receive into it right here. And then you can also see that we created a vendor bill and it updated the build quantity here. So this is a completed purchase order right now. And you can see that by looking at these totals here. And then if you notice, there's now a vendor bills with a one here and I can click on it and that's going to take us to the vendor bill just like that. So we can see how they're tied together. So that is the purchasing workflow from beginning to end. And uh, it's rather simple. And I think we covered it rather adequately for understanding the basics. But just like with everything in Odoo, when you first install an application, it's very simple. It hides a lot of the complex more advanced options from you and obviously we haven't integrated it with uh, anything else yet either and without inventory underneath which is a new development no do 12 where inventory is not installed along with purchasing then uh, there's even more simplicity uh, as you can see by the way that we receive uh, in the inventory now is uh, with this mechanism. It's really simple. It's it should be really easy for someone to understand. And um, so now through the rest of this course, we're going to be looking at more advanced purchasing options and more advanced integration uh, with purchasing. It, you know, this is an essential skill for.